You know, if you say affinity designer like four times really fast, it's really difficult. Affinity designer, affinity designer, affinity designer, affinity. Blah, blah, blah. Today I'm showing you how to make a t shirt design in affinity designer. A lot of you guys have been commenting on my videos asking for me to use affinity designer, and I played around with it a little bit, and honestly, I really love it. So we're gonna make a t shirt design today using affinity designer. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, let's get started. What are we waiting for? that on my mic what is that we're making a crispy tasty delicious design in affinity designer today i hope you guys enjoy this let's go ahead and get started now this is what we're going to be remaking today really simple design i even made my own texture using photoshop and imported it into affinity designer i'm going to show you guys how to do that in a later video and um, the first thing we always want to do is we want to start a, a document that's appropriate for t-shirt design, right? So the first thing I want to do is go up to file, new. So on the right hand side under layout, you want to change the page width to 14 inches and the page height to 18 inches. And you want to make sure that 300 DPI is set. Um, if it's at 72, just change it to 300. That is the resolution that you need. That's going to get you a nice, crispy design every single time. So when you start printing your shit, it's going to look really good, basically. Um, color format, it depends on the print, guys. If you guys are, you know, if your screen printer wants CMYK, change that to CMYK. If you are printing DTG, almost every time you're going to print an RGB color space, okay, color format. So so don't trip on that, guys. It's not a big deal. Um, you can add a bleed if you wanted to. That's pretty good for stickers and stuff, but we don't need any of that crap right now. That's basically it. Now what we're gonna do is go to create. So now we have a new artboard and we're actually going to remake this camera from scratch. It's really easy. We just wanna go to our rectangle right here and drag out a regular rectangle about this big. It doesn't need to be too big, just like that. And we want that to be black. Okay, we're gonna fill that with black. This is gonna be a black and white design today. We're keeping it really simple. The thing I love about Affinity Designer is the fact that you have alignment tools right on the top here. So if we click on them, you can find them right there on the right hand side. All right, and if we click on them, we can center our design. So what we're gonna do is duplicate this layer right here, but first I wanna actually show you guys where the layers are. They're located on the right hand side in case you guys didn't know that. It's the same as Photoshop, guys. It's very, very similar. If you've used Photoshop, Illustrator, any of the Adobe products, you're definitely familiar with this layout. I promise it's really easy and it's similar. So, um, or it's easy because it's similar, I should say. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have our layers. Now what I wanna do is actually click on this rectangle. It's going to highlight with a text box, transform box, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna hold an option and just drag and duplicate. Now we have a duplicate copy. We're just gonna make it about this small. So this is going to act like the shutter button, I guess you can say on the left-hand side here. It would actually be the right hand side of the camera if we were to be facing towards the viewfinder. What we're going to do is actually go up to where it says corner and we're going to change the corner to rounded. I want that to be nice and rounded. And we're going to do the same thing we just did. We're going to duplicate this one now. So we're duplicating again and we're just going to resize it. And this is all preference, by the way. You can do whatever you want, but I'm going to resize it to about this big. This is going to be part of our viewfinder component, whatever you want to call it. So that's pretty good. The next thing I want to do is drag out a circle. And we're just actually going to um, drag out one about this big and it's going to be pure white and we can use our alignment tools to make sure this is perfectly aligned drag that up a little bit and that's a little too big so i'm going to hold in shift and command resize it a little bit like that and the next thing i want to do is actually uh, copy that and paste that in place so now i have a duplicate copy so i did command c command v and i pasted that and then from here what i want to do is add a stroke so we're actually going to add a stroke about let's say five inches for now and let's resize this circle. So we're just resizing this circle about this big and let's create one more copy. So command C, command V, we have another copy and then shift command and you can resize perfectly. So now we have two of those outlines but let's go and actually resize this one just a little bit bigger, about that big and let's make one more copy. So command C, command V and drag that all the way inside. So it's gonna be about right here and let's just fill that with black and we can actually resize a couple of these just to kind of fine tune them maybe like this so you can keep adding to this depending on what look you want but i think this looks pretty cool so the next thing i want to do is just drag out a circle and fill it with white just to add some detail to the camera and that can sit right here but we don't want to stroke on that one so i'm just going to take that stroke away so that circle is bigger and it can sit right there that's fine 
And I want to add one more component on the top just to make the camera look like it's a little beefier. And we could just use a rounded rectangle for this. And what you could do is you could actually hold in command and then use the left bracket and send it behind everything just like that. And this does need to be centered. So we will have to move some stuff over to make this work. So this shutter button is way too big. So we need to move that over. So this is about where I want everything to sit. And now our camera looks like it has some, I don't know, weight, bulkiness, whatever you want to call it, ergonomics. I'm just throwing words out there now. Anyway, this is pretty cool. So we're going to actually go ahead and group this. So I'm selecting everything at once. And similar to Photoshop, we could do Command G and that will group everything. Look at that guys, pretty easy. And we're going to go up to our alignment tools again and just make sure everything is aligned. What I want to do next is I want to add some text going around it. So I'm just going to drag out an ellipse again. And just to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here, I'm going to make it red, send that to the back. Now I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and I'm just going to hover over the one of the lines. Basically there's a faint bluish line. We're going to hover over it until we see a T with a little squiggly line. Once you see that, you can just click once and that will create a text path. And it won't put lower mipsum for some odd reason, but we're gonna type out BNH photo. And then from here, we just wanna mess with some of these alignment options, right? There's these little arrow thingy majiggers. I guess it's like a little sliver. And we can use those to um, change the positioning of our text. What I did is I aligned it to the bottom real quick. And then I also made the paragraph centered. So it's perfectly centered right now, but the problem is I want this on the top right here, on the top of the line. It's on the inside of the line and I don't want that. So I'm gonna go right next to baseline, hit this little arrow and it's gonna go reverse text path. That's exactly what we want. And now as you can see, it's perfectly where we want it. And then from here, I can just raise the, the font size to 72 points and let's change that font to classic. I feel like it works really well for this design. And then we're probably gonna go higher on our font size now. Once we change the font, it's gonna change font sizes. Every font has its own like size basically, right? Depending on who designed it. So anyway, now I'm just gonna make sure everything is aligned perfectly before I continue on, and it is. And I do think our camera is a little too big, so we're gonna take our camera and just resize it. And I don't like the way my, my camera looks actually. <laughs> I don't know why it's bugging me. So I'm just gonna mess with it a little bit more. Maybe it's these strokes are too big. Anyway, I mean, I can keep going crazy with it. I'm just gonna add some subtle details real quick. And what I wanna do is actually select my text real quick, hold an option and use the left arrow key and change the kerning just a little bit. I think it's a little too crazy. But other than that, I think it looks good now. And then from here, we are going to type out some other text. We're gonna type out BNH photo shoot more like that. So we're encouraging people to take more photos kind of thing. Um, and then we're just gonna drag out the font size a little bit. The font that we're gonna use at the bottom is called Anagri, I think. Anagri, I think that's how you say it. And I think it looks pretty cool. So we're just gonna use that at the bottom, space it out a little bit more. Again, holding an option. You don't actually have to select the entire text line. Actually, all you really have to do is select the text until you see the frame and then just hold an option. You could do it this way too. It's a lot easier actually. Um, but once we have that, we also wanna make sure it's the same font size so everything's consistent. So what font size am I using? I'm using 96, so we wanna use 96 at the bottom as well. So I'm just gonna type in 96. So we're gonna use another text line real quick, and we're gonna put quality gear, so Q, L, T, Y, and we wanna make sure, so we're basically abbreviating quality because it's not gonna fit, and you'll see what I'm saying in a second. Another thing is the kerning does need to change. Look how spaced out this is. If I wanted to change that, I just select the text and hold an option and um, hit the up arrow instead of the left and right, obviously, because it is stacked. And then we can resize it. And what's the font size? 53. Let's go ahead and do 54 on that, just so it's even. So now we can kind of drag it in the center of the B and the S. And then let's go ahead and duplicate that text line by selecting it, holding an option, dragging to the right, just like this. And then let's type out gear now. So gear. And there's other ways to stack text, but I'm just doing it this way because I'm used to it. You can do it at whatever way you want. Now let's go ahead and add some lines using the pen tool. So I'm just going to make one point and another point, and we're just going to make the stroke bigger, just like this. Really simple, and we want to make sure the cap is rounded, which it is, and we can go up to six with that. I think that's thick enough. Drag that line that we just made over, so we have two. We can go about right there, and let's go ahead and drag this in between. So it is centered and there is guides to let you know if it's centered or not, which it is. Now we have perfectly centered text in between those lines and we'll do the same thing over here. So we're going to take the gear and just make sure it is centered 
and it is. And now if we wanted to, we can select everything we just did, including the text, and group all that together. See, now it's all grouped and we can align it to the artboard so we know it is perfectly aligned. The lines on quality can be thicker in my opinion. I think they can be like eight. Yeah, I think eight looks way better. Now I selected my entire design and I just made sure it's centered to the artboard, which it is. We are good to go, it's in its own group, so we can name this design. I wanna add some texture to it, so in order to add texture, all I need to do is actually add a layer mask. Once I make that layer mask, all I have to do is select it, and then we wanna go to Pixel Persona, okay? So basically, Affinity has personas. Now, if you guys are confused on what the personas do, just look up a tutorial, it's really easy. I don't wanna explain it in this one video because it's just too much to go over. So basically, we're switching to Pixel Persona because we're gonna start texturing in this persona, if that makes sense. So I actually did make a custom brush here, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in another video, so don't worry. But I'm just going to um, paint black over it, and it has a layer mask, so it will cut out of that if that makes sense. So now I have a textured design. If you ask me, that was a pretty tasty design. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section below. What did you think of this Affinity Designer tutorial? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. And also, if you guys love my channel, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Turn on notifications because I make videos every single week. You don't want to miss them, guys. They're free, completely free. And you guys can learn something new or just watch me be an idiot. I don't know. And if you guys can't get enough of my videos, you can watch my last one right here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating. Keep being awesome, okay? I mean that. Don't stop being awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.